So based on accessibility.digital.gov, you can see that they say, choose a typeface that emphasizes clarity and legibility. First, it performs well when it's small or large. It has a large X height. The character is large for its point size. The metrics such as X height are consistent between letter forms. Individual letter forms are distinct in shape and can't be confused with others. For example, capital I, L and one are distinct. Zero and O are distinct. The typeface supports all characters and font styles that are needed. Now, the very first font that I have for you is Inter. Now, Inter is a Google font. It has been created by Wei Huang, and it is one of the most popular and most common UI design fonts out there. It has quite a standard look, nothing too unique about it, but the legibility and the symmetry of this font is absolutely perfect. Now, as you can see on the far right hand side, it does have a 69% X height, meaning that the baseline, as you can see right here, is 69% of the entire height of this font. So it sits within the 68 to 69% range, which is what is preferred for something to be used in UI design. Now, as you can see in this very quick mock-up, this is Inter being utilized in this UI design. And you can see that it doesn't really portray any additional personality to the font, but it is once again, very easy to read, very easy on the eyes, and it is very easy to digest in your UI designs. Now, if you are looking for a UI design font with a little bit more personality, I would highly recommend another Google font, Space Grotesque by Florin Carsten. Now, as you can see, it has a 70% X height, which is great for legibility. It reads perfectly well at a small scale in the top left corner. It also reads perfectly fine at a large scale. And as you can see with Space Grotesque, with the A around the spur and also the shoulder of the R, there's a little bit more personality. There's a little bit more uniqueness to this font, which makes it a little bit more fun. And for me personally, I find Space Grotesque a little bit more techy, mainly because with the fonts, they're a little bit more rigid. So as you can see with the word gently, these tails, I believe they're called tails, they're a little bit more rigid. So it does give me a little bit more of that tech vibe. So if I was to design something in the FinTech space, around the crypto space, I think Space Grotesque would be a perfect font to really bring through a little bit more personality. So as you can see with this dashboard, you can see that it does bring some little details through in the UI design, especially with the Good Morning Mizco. It really does add a little bit more techiness to this design. Um, once again, this is just a very simple concept design. But if you imagine if we went dark theme with Space Grotesque, it would definitely give that really techy, futuristic vibe to this design. Now, the third font is Work Sans. Now, Work Sans, once again, is a Google font. Now, Work Sans is very similar to Inter with some slight nuances in the actual typeface. Now, as you can see in the spur of the R, there is a little bit more inconsistency where it connects with the rest of the R. So with these little inconsistencies in the width of this typeface, it creates a little bit more of a personality when used in the actual UI design. Now, once again, in the top left corner, it reads perfectly fine when it's small, it reads well when it's large, and it also has a 75% X height. So it is a little bit more than what is recommended, which is around 68 to 70%, but it still reads perfectly well, even when it's in a very small scale, as you seen in the top left corner. So if we want to see it in practice, once again, looks very similar to Inter, and you probably won't be able to see the differences, but you can see with the lower cap G in Good Morning, you can see that it brings a little bit more of a personality as it sort of sticks out and it feels a little bit more fun. So onto the next font, we have DM Sans, and this is a Google font once again, created by Colophon Foundry and John, Pinhorn. Now we have an X height of 72%, which is still sits around the great legibility uh, ratio. Top left corner, it does read quite well on a small scale as well. And large scale, it reads perfectly fine. Now for me, I do like the lowercase a for DM Sans. Um, I do like how it's presented and it adds a little bit more personality because there are a little bit more curvatures within the A. Now, if we take a look at the actual UI design of it, 
You won't be able to see too many differences, but that is the point of these sans serif fonts. Sans serif are meant to be used for legibility and to be able to be utilized in things like this, like UI design, so they're not too fancy. If you take a look at Good Morning Mizco, once again, the G has some unique takes to the actual curves around the lower part of the G. Now, I don't know the exact terms of it. I'm not obviously not a topography uh, designer, but so on to the next one, we have Satoshi. Now, Satoshi is not a Google font. It is a font share font and it's being created by Denny and Gara. Now, it reads well on the smaller case and it reads very well on large case as well. It has 66% X height. Now, I've personally used this on a number of my projects. I've also used it for bits of the designership as well. Now, the one thing that I don't like about the Satoshi font is when you utilize the uppercase and the lowercase letters, because they have a very low X height in comparison to the other fonts, you'll notice that there is quite a large gap from the top of the uppercase letter and then the top of the lowercase letter as well. Now in UI design, because we work within such small amounts of real estate, it does sometimes misalign things. So when you want to vertically align some of the text in the center, because the top of the capital letter is so high up and the lowercase, there's such room, there's so much room in between, it does create a little bit of a gap. So if you take a look at the three stats boxes, if you take a look at to do or in progress or completed, you can see that right where it says in progress, there is a lot of space between the top of the I and the lowercase n and the top of the P and the lowercase r. So for me, it is a little bit easier to read because there is a bit a bigger contrast between the uppercase and lowercase. But when you're utilizing this in UI design, I personally like it when all the fonts are sitting at around the 70% X height range. Now onto the next font, we have Supreme. So nothing too special about this one. It's a font share font, a great company that has created this font. And the person behind it is Ilya Naumov. Hopefully I pronounced that right. It does have an X height of 67%. So a little bit lower on that range, but it reads well when it's small, reads well when it's large as well. And this is simply just another alternative to another free font that you can utilize in your designs to maybe bring a little bit more variety in your work. So taking a look at it inside a UI design, you can see that it does stand a little bit thinner compared to all the other fonts. So onto the next one, we had Switzer. So this is a font share font created by Jeremy Hornus now reads really well when it's small, reads very well when it's large. I quite like the large and bold version, a style of Switzer. It's got a 79% X height. So the gap between the top of the S and the top of the lowercase w, that gap is quite small compared to the other fonts. But once again, once we take a look at it in practice, it doesn't make too much of a difference. I personally can't really tell that it, the gap is much smaller than the other fonts um, that we've seen previously. But once again, this is another font that you can utilize in your UI design work. They've got a ton of great styles for this font, well supported by the font share team. And it, lo it looks quite well and it reads quite well as well. So I personally would use this in a project. I haven't just yet, but it's another alternative for your UI design projects. Now the last font is Open Sans. Now Open Sans has been around for quite some time and it's been utilized as a, a web font for many, many years. It's a Google font. It's created by Steve Madison, reads well on the small scale, reads very well on the large scale as well. It has a 78% X height. So there is a very small gap between the top of the O and the top of the lowercase p in open. And if we take a look at it on the UI design, you can see that it's a beautiful font that it's easy to read. Now, I personally haven't used Open Sans recently, mainly because I feel like there are so many great and beautiful fonts nowadays on the market and they're well-designed, beautiful symmetry, well-constructed. And there is just something about Open Sans which I feel like it doesn't feel structured. I am not a topography designer, so I don't know what it is about this font, but there is definitely something. And if you can find it out, if you know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments below, but there is just something that doesn't feel as stable, 
well constructed and with perfect symmetry like something as good as work sands or dm sands or inter there's just something that stands out to me that it feels a little bit i don't know what the word is but loose now before i let you guys go if for whatever reason in the ui design project you don't want to be using a third party font i would definitely recommend you guys to be using the system font so if you are designing for ios simply use san francisco and if you are designing for android simply use Roboto. These are the system fonts that are being utilized natively within these devices. So if you ever have questions around what font I should use, I don't want to use a third party, then which one should I use? Avoid Arial, avoid Helvetica, and simply revert to the system fonts, guys. All right, so hopefully you guys found this video extremely useful. Let me know which font is your favorite, and I will see you in another video very soon.